the Buddha taught that due to craving, greed, anger, and confusion, the mind may be a source of great suffering. With this path, we're using an ancient and proven way to transform our minds and behavior. We're choosing to trust in our own potential for wisdom, awakening, and compassion for others and ourselves. This book is a collaboration from members of our community. It's intended as a supportive guide for those new to this path as well as long-term practitioners. It's structured around the three jewels of Bud, Dash, D-H-I-S-M, the Buddha, the potential for our own awakening and the goal of the path, the Dharma, the teachings, how we get there, and the Sangha, our community of wise friends who we travel with. We'll share how we have used these teachings to recover from addiction in a way that honors what is wise and helpful for us individually, as opposed to a one-size-fits. All AP. Approach. E. Each of us has our own unique identities and life experiences. Some of us have experienced trauma or lifelong challenges due to being a minority in race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, social class status, disability status, etc. Our program recognizes that being in recovery also means healing and gaining wisdom within our own social identities. We encourage you to adapt this book and create inquiries that may help promote healing, growth, and understanding based on your own identity. Yeah. 
some of the great we describe our path and practice in recovery dharma for people new to recovery new to buddhism and for those familiar with both this book describes the original buddhist teachings from which our program comes the essence of buddhism's fundamental and early teachings the four noble truths to show how practicing the eightfold path is a pragmatic pathway which can transform the challenges of both early and long-term recovery this is a renunciation based program regardless of our individ dash ual addictions all of our members commit to a basic after not from that take an errant substance or behavior for process addictions like food and technology renunciation may mean establishing thoughtful boundaries and in 10 dash tions for some of us abstinence from things like obsessive sexual behav dash ior are compulsively seeking out love and relationships may be necessary as we work to understand and find meaningful boundaries many of us have found that after renouncing our primary addiction for a period of time other harmful behaviors and process addictions become apparent in our lives rather than getting discouraged we found that we can meet these behaviors with compassion wisdom and patient investigation into our habitual tendencies we believe recovery is a lifelong holistic process of peeling back layers of habits and conditioned behaviors to find our own potential for awakening our program is peer-led we do not follow any one teacher or leader we support each other as partners walking the path of recovery together this is not a program based in dogma or religion but in find dash in the truth for ourselves this insight has worked for us but is not the only path it's fully compatible with other spiritual paths and programs of recovery we know from our own experience that true recovery is only possible with the intention of radical honesty understanding awareness and integrity and we trust you to discover your own path this is a program that asks us to never stop growing it asks us to own our choices and be responsible for our own healing it's based on mindfulness kindness generosity forgiveness and deep compassion we do not rely on methods of shame and fear as motivators these haven't worked in our own pasts and have often created more struggle and suffering through relapse and discouragement the courage it takes to recover from addiction is ultimately courage of the heart and we aim to support each other as we commit to this brave work many of us have spent a lot of time criticizing ourselves in this program we renounce violence and doing harm including the violence and harm we do to ourselves we believe in the healing power of forgive dash ness we put our trust in our own potential to awaken and recover in the four noble truths of the buddha and in the people we meet in connect with in meetings and throughout our journey in recovery of course we cannot escape the circumstances and conditions that are part of the human condition we've already tried through drugs and alcohol through sex and codependency through gambling 
and technology, through work and shopping, through food or the restric. Dash. Tian of food, through obsession and the futile attempts to control our experiences and feelings, and we're here because it didn't work. This is a program that invites us to recognize and accept that some pain and disappointment will always be present, to investigate the unskillful ways we have dealt with that pain in the past, and to develop a habit of under dash standing, compassion, forgiveness, and insight toward our own pain, the pain of others, and the pain we have caused. Acceptance with insight and compassion is what creates freedom from the suffering that makes our pain seem unbearable. This book is only an introduction to a path that can bring live dash oration and freedom from the cycle of addiction. The intention, and the hope of our program, is that every person on the path will be empowered to make it their own. May you be happy. May you be at ease. May you be free from suffering. May all beings be free from suffering. Where to begin? How? Can? We use Buddhism for our recovery. Outlined below are the areas that we suggest you concentrate your energy on while walking this path. We come to understand the Four Noble Truths and use them as a guide for our path of recovery. This program doesn't ask us to be dash believe in anything other than our own potential to wake up, just allowing ourselves to believe that it's possible, or even might be possible. Through experiential learning, we realize that our efforts can make a difference and this is a way to recover. Then we make a decision to repeatedly commit to this path. As we learn about the Four Noble Truths, including the Eightfold Path that leads to the end of the suffering caused by addiction, we put these principles into practice in our lives. This book presents an introduction to these truths and the Eightfold Path as a guide to a non-harming way of being in the world. It is both a philosophy and a plan of action. Meditation is an essential part of the program. This book con dash contains some basic instructions for you so you can start right away. Most of us have found it very helpful to attend meetings that include an op dash opportunity to practice meditation with others. A key to this program is establishing a regular meditation practice in and outside of meetings. This will help us begin the process of investigating our own minds, our reactivity, and our behavior. We look deeply at the nature and causes of our suffering so we can find a path to freedom that's based on authentic self-knowledge. The subsequent chapters discuss three aspects of the program. The three jewels of Buddhism, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sang. Dash. Ha. As a way of developing the wisdom, ethical conduct, and spiritual practice that leads to recovery. We hope that groups and individuals will use this book to customize their own course of recovery. We offer some suggestions in that spirit. You're invited to take what works for you and leave the rest at the end of each section or inquiries for self-exploration. These questions can be used as part of a formal process with a mentor. 
wise friend, or group, as tools to explore a specific life situation, as guides. For a daily self-inquiry practice, or as meeting discussion topics. A wise friend or mentor can be of great help in deepening your understanding. And we encourage you to reach out to people you encounter at meetings. Supportive friendships are an integral part of the practice. The questions may bring up shame, guilt, or sadness, or they may possibly activate trow. Dash. Ma. It could be beneficial to set up a self-care strategy ahead of time. The intent of the questions is to deepen our practice so we can experience more freedom, not to bring us more suffering. Our path is not a checklist, but rather a practice in which we choose where and how to invest our energy in a way that is both wise and compassionate toward ourselves and others. This journey involves meditation, meetings, and written inventories, all of which can improve our lives greatly. The practice of the Eightfold Path helps us develop in dash sight and compassion as we begin to look into the causes and conditions that led to our own suffering with addiction. This path doesn't have an end. There will continue to be suffering and challenges in life. This path offers a way to transform the suffering caused by our habitual reactions to these challenges, and an end to the illusion of escape we tried to find in substances or behaviors. It's a way to break our chains with our own hands. It's a path of deep freedom and refuge. The practice. Renunciation. We understand addiction to describe the overwhelming craving and compulsive use of substances or behaviors to escape press. Dash. End time reality, either by clinging to pleasure or running from pain. We commit to the intention of abstinence from alcohol and other addictive substances. For those of us recovering from process addictions, Partiku, Dash, Larly those for which complete abstinence is not possible, we also identify and commit to wise boundaries around our harmful behaviors, Prefera, Dash, Lie with the help of a mentor or therapeutic professional. Meditation. We commit to the intention of developing a daily daily medita dash tion practice. Practice. We use meditation as a tool to investigate our actions in dash tensions, reactivity, and the nature of our mind. Meditation is a personal practice, and we commit to finding a balanced effort toward this and other healthy practices on the path. Meetings. We attend recovery meetings whenever whenever possible, in person, and or online, whether it be with recovery dharma, other Buddhist communities, or, or other recovery fellowships. In early recovery, it is rec. Dash. Amended to attend a recovery meeting as often as possible. We also commit to becoming an active part of the community, offering our own experiences and service wherever possible. The path. We commit to deepening and broadening our understanding of the Four Noble Truths and to practicing the Eightfold Path in our daily lives.
inquiry and investigation we explore the four noble truths through writing and sharing in depth detailed inquiries these can be worked on with the guidance of a mentor or therapist in partnership with a trusted friend or with a group as we complete our written inquiries we strive to hold ourselves accountable and take direct responsibility for our actions using wise intentions this includes making amends for the harm we have caused in our past sangha wise friends mentors we cultivate relationships within a recovery community to support our own recovery and the recovery of others after we have completed significant work on our inquiries s dash established a meditation practice and achieved renunciation from our ad dash addictive behaviors we can become mentors to help others on their path to liberation from addiction anyone with any period of time of renewal dash seation and practice can be of service to others in their sangha when mentors are not available a group of wise friends can act as partners in self inquiry and support each other's practice growth we continue our study of buddhist practices through reading listening to dharma talks visiting and becoming members of recovery and spiritual sanghas and attending meditation or retreats to enhance our understanding wisdom and practice we undertake a lifelong jor dash nay of growth and awakening i awakening buddha most of us enter recovery with one goal in mind to stop the suffering that got us here in the first place whether that was drinking using drugs stealing eating gambling sex codependency technology or other process addictions as newcomers most of us would be satisfied with simple damage control or reduction in harmful behavior we want to stop hurting ourselves or others in particular ways you're reading this because there is a spark of wisdom in you that desires to seek the end of the suffering of your addiction you've already taken the first step on the path to your own awakening everyone who has made the wise intention to recover wherever they are on their path has access that pure wise part of themselves that the wreckage of ad dash addiction can never touch so many of us have hearts that are still in pain from the suffering we've experienced some have undergone trauma which often led us to seek temporary relief in our addictive behavior which unintentionally added more suffering to our original wounds we tried to protect our dash selves by running from the pain putting on a mask and pushing people away for fear of being vulnerable all to adapt to what often feels like a hostile world we start to recover when we let ourselves believe in and rediscover dash for our pure radiant and courageous heart where we find our potential for awakening resides who were we before the world got to us who are we beyond the obsession of our conditioned minds who are we beneath all our walls and heartbreak despite the trauma addiction fear and 
shame, there is a still and centered part of us that remains whole. There is a part of us that's not traumatized, that's not addicted, that's not ruled by fear or shame. This is where wisdom comes from, and it's the foundation of our recovery. If you're at the beginning of your recovery journey, it may seem impossible to access this part of you. But you're here because you already have. Perhaps you felt some small glimmer of hope, maybe born out of desperation, that there might be a way out, that things could change if you took wise action and reached out for help. Maybe it feels impossible to have faith in this part of you, to believe that you have the potential to be capable of wisdom and kindness and ethical deeds, to believe you can be the source of your own healing and awakening. Recovery is a gradual process. This path is a lifetime of individual steps. It's not only the bud. Dash. D's example that shows us the way, but also those before us who have gone through the process of recovery and made it to the other side. They show us that we can, too. Two. So what does the Buddha have to do with recovery? There are two ways in which we use the word Buddha, which means awakened. First, it is the title given to Siddhartha Gautama, a prince who lived in modern-day Nepal and India roughly 2,500 years ago. After many years of scholarly study, meditation, and ethical practice, he was awakened to the nature of human suffering and discovered a path that leads to the end of suffering, and the freedom that comes from a walk. Dash. Ending. After his awakening, Siddhartha came to be known as the Buddha. The second use of the word Buddha follows from the first. Bud. Dash. DHA can refer, not only to the historical figure but also to the idea of awakening. The fact that each of us has within ourselves the potential to awaken to the same understanding as the original Buddha. When we take refuge in the Buddha, we take refuge not in Siddhartha as a person, but in the fact that he was able to find freedom from his suffering and so can we. The story of the original Buddha to understand the nature of this awakening it could help to know something about the life of Siddhartha Gautama. One of the many versions of the story of the Buddha tells us that Siddhartha was a wealthy prince, born into privilege, and sheltered from much of the suffering of the world. The story goes that young Siddhartha sneaked away from his palace and saw people suffering from old age, sick, dash, ness, and death, he realized that no amount of privilege could protect him from this suffering. Wealth wouldn't prevent it. Comfort wouldn't prevent it. Pleasure wouldn't prevent it. Despite having a life of ease, Sid, dash, Dartha still found that he experienced suffering and dissatisfaction. He was born with everything, but it wasn't enough. This persistent dissatisfaction with life, whether dramatic or subtle, is called dukkha, a Pali word we still use today. All humans x dash Parians dukkha, but some of us, particularly those of us who have struggled with addiction, seem to experience it on a more intense level and with worse consequences. What is addiction but the consistent and nagging feeling of not 
Enough. What is addiction other than being constantly unsatisfied? Siddhartha saw that pain was an unavoidable part of life, and he became determined to find a way to put an end to it. He left his family and for a time, lived the life of an ascetic, the extreme opposite to his previous life of comfort and wealth. As an ascetic, he sat in extremely un dash comfortable postures meditating for long periods of time. He slept very three little. He ate very little. He even tried breathing very little. He thought that, since material comfort hadn't eliminated suffering, maybe the oppo dash sight of material comfort would at the brink of death, Siddhartha Avon dash known the idea idea of extreme asceticism and instead chose what he called the middle path Siddhartha realized that both the extremes of pleasure and death dash Nile of pleasure pleasure had brought him nowhere nearer to liberation neither extreme had given relief from his suffering so he set off on his own too to meditate sitting beneath a bodhi tree he meditated deeply and discovered dash earth the path that leads to the end of suffering he looked within himself for his own liberation liberation and he found it what siddhartha understood as he meditated under the bodhi tree is known as the dharma or the truth which explains the causes and nature of cyclical suffering it's the basis of the teachings of bud dash dhism central to this path are the four noble truths and the eightfold path which will be explained in the next chapter siddhartha was called the buddha or the one who woke up because most people go through life with a false sense of reality like being in a trance the buddha spent the rest of his life developing the dharma into a simple but sophisticated system he shared it with anyone who would listen dedicating himself to a life of service to free everybody from suffering he defied the norms of his time by letting women and the poorest class of citizens become monastics everyone was welcome in his sangha his spiritual community central to his teachings was the idea that liberation is available to all to the most broken and oppressed among us to the sick to the powerless to those who have lost everything to those who have nothing left to lose all of us even the most addicted the most lost can find our way to awakening because we all have the ability to access the pure wise and true nature within each of us walking in the footsteps of the buddha the story of the buddha may seem far removed from our every dash day reality but his life before and after his awakening offers us a model for our own lives all of us can relate to the inevitability of suffering aging sickness and death have touched us all we've experienced the truth of impermanence the highs we achieved in our addictions al dash ways wore off but we kept chasing them anyway we've also endured 
Other forms of suffering, some self-inflicted and some at the hands of others. And we've dealt with subtle forms of dukkha, the annoyances, the boredom, the loss of what we want, the inability to keep what we have, the impatience with life, the refusal to accept what is, and what have we done with these experiences of suffering. At this point most of our stories start to look different from Siddhartha's, and this difference is what led us here. Instead of sitting with our suffering, we found ways to change it, avoid it, or replace it with something more pleasurable. For some of us, that came in the form of drinking or using drugs. Others used sex, relationships, food, self-harm, dash, ing, technology, work, or gambling. And some of our stories contain a version of all of the above. Whatever the behavior, it was just a tempo, dash, rary solution that always led to deeper suffering for ourselves and others. We've come to realize that our stories don't have to continue like this. The life of Siddhartha, and the lives of the countless people we meet in recovery who have found an end to the suffering of addiction, prove to us that there is another way. We can look back on our own lives and see clearly the path that brought us here. We can examine our own actions and intentions and come to understand how we shape our own future. And we can gain insight into the nature of our own suffering and follow a path that leads to less harm and less suffering. The Buddha began as a layperson with suffering, just like us. This is not a path of miracle or blind faith. This is a path of practice and the Buddha can be an ideal that inspires us. Experience has shown us that good results come when we put the necessary effort into our own recov dash Uri. This is a program of empowerment. We take responsibility for our own intentions and actions. The Sangha is here to help us along the way. We don't have to identify as Buddhists, and we don't have to meditate for hours each day. But we have found that the path outlined in the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path can lead us to liberation from both the suffering of addiction and the suffering that comes from simply being human. We trust in the potential in all all of us to find freedom from this suffering. The truth. Dharma. As people who have struggled with addiction, we're already empty. Dash. Madely familiar with the truth of suffering. Even if we've never heard of the Buddha, at some level we already understand the core of the teach. Dash. Ings. That in this life, there is suffering. It can be incredibly liberating to hear this said so plainly and directly. No one is trying to convince or convert us. No one is telling us. We have to believe something. No one is sugarcoating our experience. The Buddha also taught the way to free ourselves from this suf. Dash. Faring. When the Buddha awakened, he understood how samsara, or the cycle of existence, came to be and how it is maintained. The heart of these teachings which which we call the Dharma is the Four Noble Truths. These 
four truths, and the corresponding commitments, are the foundation of our program. 1. There is suffering. We commit commit to understanding the truth of suffering. 2. There is a cause of suffering. We commit to understanding that craving leads to suffering. 3. There is a way of ending suffering. We commit to understanding and experiencing that less craving leads to less suffering. 4. There is a path that leads to ending suffering. We commit to culti. Dash. Batting the path. Like a map that shows us the path, these truths help us find our way in recovery. The first noble truth. There is suffering. Some of the ways in which we may experience suffering are obvi. Dash. Aus, like poverty, hunger, pain, disappointment, and feeling separated or excluded. There is also suffering due to the divisions of our world, such as war, colonization, and oppression. Some are less obvious, like feelings of cravings, anxiety, stress, and uncertainty. We also suffer as we struggle with birth, aging, sickness, and death. As much as we want to avoid what we consider unpleasant and hold on to what we label as pleasant, dissidus, dash, faction, separation, loss, and injustice still may frequently arise. Suffering occurs whenever we fail to see the true nature of our existence, when we insist on controlling or altering our reality. The first noble truth rests on the understanding that our lives seem unsatisfactory because experience